All right, welcome back to Adventures with Rosie. Today we are talking power, uh, more specifically USB sockets for the caravan. So if you've been watching here for a while, um, you'll know that in this coming summer, we are gonna go on the road full time. Uh, so about four or five months away from now. Um, and so we're kind of addressing, I guess, little things in the caravan that are a bit niggly, um, storage, uh, washing machine, sort of things that we need to improve over the next few months that are just going to make that year on the road uh, that much more enjoyable, right? Um, it's nothing major, just small little niggly things we've picked up in our trips over the last year. And uh, one of those things is USB plugs. So this caravan has two USB plugs. This is a 2019 Jayco Journey, a 19-61.3, uh, I believe, 19 foot, three bunk model, family caravan. It has two USB plugs uh, in the whole caravan. Uh, it has a few 12 volt um, cigarette style uh, sockets, like there's one up behind the TV and there's a couple down in the bunks, um, but nothing by the main bed. So where you'd expect uh, USB plugs, right? Charging phones at night, charging tablets, e-readers, that sort of thing. It has two in the whole caravan and they are in the worst spot in my opinion, <laughs> which is just down below this table by my feet. So there are two plugs down there, uh, down by your feet when you're sitting at the dinette. And I'm guessing the reason behind that is so that you can sit at the table and charge a device. Makes sense. For us, it doesn't make sense because we have two one-year-old girls and they're crawling, they're crawling around. <laughs> and, you know, one-year-olds love to pull cables and pick up batteries and touch things they're not supposed to have. So what we do at night is we jump out of bed, we plug in our devices at night, we leave them charging down there. And then in the morning, we jump out of bed pull all the cables up and hide them away from the girls before they start crawling around and sort of playing, you know, down there in the morning. Um, to make matters worse for us, this is also right next door to the output vent from our diesel heater. So I guess charging batteries or tablets right next to a, a heater output, probably not the best idea if you lent your iPad up, you know, across it or something, I imagine it'd get pretty toasty down there. Um, so the plan today is to install a couple more. Uh, we have this, uh, surface mounted USB sockets. I'm going to start by installing a couple at the head of our bed. So our bed here in this caravan has a, a little shelf um, with a couple of cubby holes. We're going to install one in there and that'll allow us to charge devices both when you're sitting in bed and tucking it into those cubbies at night. So we're going to install them there first. I then also might look in the future at installing a couple of these up in my camera gear cupboard where I keep all my camera gear um, so I can charge batteries up there during the day. Uh, it might be a really good solution because I don't like charging any sort of batteries around the kids, obviously, you know, because I'll take them and the first place they'll go is in their mouths. So we're going to rip into that. Um, what I'm basically going to do is piggyback off the USB um, cable that feeds these two plugs here. Now, I know one thing to bear in mind is the load on that cable. It's probably not designed for four plugs. Um, by the looks of the cable, it's probably rated for about 10 amps. Uh, USB plugs draw 2.1 amps each. Um, so, or 2.5 these ones actually. So we'd, we'd be right up there, but I'm going to stop using the ones under the table and just use the ones at the head of the bed. There'd, there'd be no situation where we're using all four USB plugs at once, drawing two and a half amps each. So that's the plan. We're going to get in under the dinette here, figure out where that cable goes, trace it back. At some point in that cable, we're going to split it. We're going to put another bit of cable in and take it up to these sockets. And we'll talk about load and ratings of the cable. Um, we looked at in a sec so i've not actually looked at the cabling under here so i'm going to uh, pull the cushions off the dinette now and uh, rip into it Alrighty, so plugs on the front there uh, they run into this back. They just had this black back cover on them, which I pulled off. Cables run down here, uh, across behind this um, drawer. Uh, back down here, along here with all the other cables, past the batteries and into the battery management system there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull that cable out and feed it back. Um, we're probably going to make a splice in it around about here. But what I want to do is pull it all back to uh, here so that I've actually got a length of cable to work with. I could actually look and maybe just pull the connector straight out of there. Might be easier just to have the whole cable pulled out actually. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna feed it back, see if I can pull it out and then uh, figure out where to make a join. I 
getting this cable back through is proving to be a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, there is a big snake of cables and it takes some almost right hand turns. Um, of course this one I'm pulling back through is near the bottom so having to undo a lot of our cable ties and our little clamps but I'll do them up when I go and thread the cable back through. So hopefully it's all worth it. I think it I think it'll be worth the effort. It'll make soldering onto this cable a lot easier if I've got it out. So yeah, we'll continue on. So we trace the cable all the way back to here and there's actually three power cables that all go into the same socket. It says spare 10 amp socket. Um, so I'm guessing one of those probably runs to either the back bunks. Um, they have uh, cigarette style sockets in them or it might run up to the TV. I'm not sure if TV's labeled on here. I don't think it is. So all three of the positives go into one spade connector and all three of the negatives go into another. Um, so I'm probably going to pull those out just so I don't get buzzed while I'm working on it and then uh, we'll plug them in later on. All right, well that was a bit of fun. I've pulled the positive and the negative out for this cluster. Like I said, uh, there were three cables like this that are all on the same um, spade connectors for the, the positive and the negative. So I've pulled that out. It will mean I can't take this cable out completely because it is spliced in with the other two. So basically what I'll do is I'll figure out where on this cable I want to make the splice. I'll run it back through. I won't run it all the way through, but just kind of mock it up, put a bit of tape on it splice this cable and then we'll get to soldering the new little bit of cable on uh, on this one that we're going to use all right before we continue and start cutting into things let me just say quick disclaimer i'm not an electrician i'm not qualified i'm not a professional in, in anything to do with electrical stuff uh, i work in it as some of you know uh, and i just happen to own a soldering iron and the internet so a little bit dangerous I suppose you could say <laughs> um, but I like to have the uh, crack at this sort of thing um, obviously I'm not going near anywhere near the 240 volt side of anything right uh, USB fairly safe because it's low current um, so yeah not going to touch that stuff obviously you need to be uh, qualified I should say to go anywhere near your 240 volt plugs so I wouldn't dream of touching them so I'm fine touching the 12 volt side of stuff um, but don't take what I say as gospel, do your own research, uh, talk to professionals, that sort of thing. Yeah, this is just the way I'm doing it. It's probably not the best way, probably not the worst way, but it's the way I'm doing it. Speaking of research, one thing I like to do and one thing that is really necessary is to figure out what gauge of cable you use. So that's the thickness of the cable you're using. That will determine how much current you can put through the cable and also how long you can run the cable um, given an acceptable loss of, of power over that length you don't want to go out and buy the cheapest speaker wire you can something like this um, that's super thin because this is going to get warm when any sort of current gets drawn through it so what i like to do is uh, google for a wire size calculator we'll go to this one here wire barn and basically you enter three things uh, when it loads you enter the voltage so we will select we're working with 12 volts uh, the amperage so the max these usb ports will draw is five amps total let's put 10 in there to be sure and the wire length so we've run about two meters of wire so we'll do that percentage drop we'll leave it two percent and we will hit calculate and so what this is going to do is calculate the maximum length of cable based on the gauge and whether or not it's okay so what we'll see is that a 22 gauge wire is or 0 0.33 millimeters squared is not okay for this length um, the cable i've bought is 1.13 millimeters squared so that's about an 18 gauge and it says here the max length we can run is 3.76 meters of that gauge so somewhere between four and six meters we're between 18 and 16 gauge so we can run between four and six meters of that cable without too much loss and the cable is acceptable. So it is super good um, and really, I mean, it's good practice, right? To figure out that gauge. The last thing you can do is run something too thin. It's gonna get warm. And the other end of that is, um, say I've got some thicker cable here. You wouldn't wanna run anything too thick, right? This is a battery cable and I mean, that would be a nightmare to solder to try and run. It's also expensive. So 
yeah, you want to find that sweet spot. Use a couple of calculators if you need to, um, you know, to see the differences. Uh, just be aware that some uh, cables will have the millimeters squared as the size. Uh, some will use a gauge, so like gauge 18 is X amount of millimeters squared. So really important to check that out. Um, so let's get to soldering. It's been a few years since I've soldered something, so I <laughs> might have a few goes at it. Uh, I'm going to solder it all and uh, then we'll pull it all back through and hook it up. So I've got these two ends all heat shrunk now, just put a bit of tape over those ends of the red ones and now I can slide the uh, bigger heat shrink over the top, hopefully it'll fit. Um, and that's just going to make the whole thing look a bit tidier when it's uh, down there. I won't even notice that I've been mucking around with it. Alright, so cables have been run back through, through, down the back, across, through there, and back to the back of this plug here now. I'm going to put some zip ties in here and just tidy that, that up a little bit. Because uh, I had to cut the zip ties along the way to get the cable out. So in behind here is the join that I just made. It sits about there somewhere. So the new cable is going to come along, up, and then into this back cubby here. So I'll get the, the old stuff plugged in, that old plug plugged in, I'll get all those cables locked back down, then I can put the cushions back on the dinette, and then we'll figure out how we're going to poke that cable up through the uh, cubby there, and where we're going to mount the little uh, USB ports. Alright, well that was a bit of a marathon, took me a lot longer than I thought, but we have our cable, here it is. Got about a meter of it to play with. Um, so now the thing to figure out is where to mount this little USB box. My initial thought was mount it up the top here. It looked quite cool, looks quite sleek, but I don't want to drill into this kind of countertop here. I don't know what it's made of. I don't know how to drill into it safely without cracking it or anything like that. So I'm going to probably mount this under here, maybe on the side, maybe up underneath, something like that. Um, I figure as well if it's mounted out of the way the kids are less likely to play with it when they're jumping around in our bed and also we can throw our cables in so if you pull the cable out of your device you know you just throw the cable still attached to this plug you just throw it in the cubby so it might keep things quite tidy so I'm going to figure out where to mount this now I'm going to crimp a couple of spade connectors on the end of this plug it all back in and then give it a test and hopefully it works because it's getting late <laughs> all right so I've thread my cables through and I've put the spade connectors on the end, they're just as simple as sliding them on and crimping them. Now we'll uh, plug these into the bottom and then we're going to mount it uh, up on the inside like that, out of sight. Well, we are done and dusted. I ended up putting it over this side um, rather than in the middle. Uh, I think I'll just get a longer um, iPhone cable for Chelsea because she sleeps on that side of the bed. Um, but what I didn't end up wanting was a bit of cable along the bottom of the cupboard. Um, I also realized the screws I had were longer than this board is thick. So I ended up screwing it in that corner. I ended up screwing it on crooked in the end because <laughs> I couldn't really see what I was doing in there. But I think it'll do the trick. So I'm going to lift the bed up, plug it all back in, make sure nothing catches fire. And um, yeah, then uh, plug in my phone and test it out. Right, moment of truth. Hey, it works. And nothing is on fire. Successful evening. Well, thank you for stopping by and uh, watching this video. A bit of more of a DIY style. Uh, don't fret, we are going away this weekend and we're going somewhere we haven't taken you before. So we're still deciding where a couple of places. 
um, but it will be a new destination so we're going to go there and explore uh, have a look around test out the new USB plugs <laughs> which would be quite good um, it's funny looking at them now I realize I only move them like a meter maybe a meter and a half so it's a few hours work for that but I think the location the bed is a lot better I'm not sure why Jayco in this particular model don't have them in at the head of the bed and there are other models I've seen like a his and hers USB plug at the head of the bed but not this one for some reason so I'm not sure why but hey uh, we've got plugs there now I might look in the future at putting some up in one of these cupboards as well for like I said for charging my batteries but I think for now that'll do the trick um, yeah appreciate you watching and uh, if you've got any questions about the products I've used or anything like that fire away in the comments below if you're sitting at your keyboard and you're stressed out because you saw me do something wrong we didn't like my terrible soldering then I'll fire away in the comments below as well and I'll answer your questions ASAP um, I'll see you in the next video bye